This is Minecraft's safest and bestest base ever by Wenzo. And don't mistake this for any other pathetic base. This one has been upgraded in every single way possible. For one, it adds an advanced, brand new technology that some scientists are calling walls. Though admittedly we spent so much of our budget on these high-tech walls, we couldn't afford to add a roof. Oh, so you mean you could just fly in from the roof in like three seconds? Well, not so fast there, buddy. Remember how Carves didn't allow people to use specifically Elytra when attempting to break into his base? That was obviously unfair, right? But Wenzo is a genius. If you break into his base, you're not allowed to use any items at all. You gotta leave them all at home. Because I too love to tell a thief who's actively breaking into my house that they're cheating for using a lockpick. So to be honest, we're not even gonna judge this by the standards of a base because, obviously, instead we'll be judging it as an obstacle course. So this time, how about I show you how I plan speedruns for these bases? <laughs> Alright, so the very first defense is a floor made entirely of drip leaf and a staircase leading into the next room. Now many people who enter this room use a tactic known as running around in circles like an idiot and almost dying before going up the stairs. But I came up with a shortcut that I call the drip leaf exploit. Basically, you calculate the positions of the entrance and the exit to the room, then you triangulate the vector from one to the other to compute the angle with which you must orient your camera, and then you hold down W, skipping all the useless running around in circles. Now in the next room, uh, oh no, guys, I think this is the end of the run. Look inside this accessible dispenser. This tripwire is gonna fire those arrows at the end crystal, but my spacebar is broken. How will I get around the tripwire? Yeah, so if you guys have ever wondered why jungle temples, a structure that have existed for 12 years, put the tripwire hooks inside the wall, this is why. Okay, but look, I gotta give them a little credit. I understand, I know, walls are still a new technology in the base building community. Now rooms four and five are actually gonna be 1% difficult, especially because I added like five times more blazes into the little maze to make it actually hard. But luckily the builders were kind enough to add layer three so speedrunners would have an easy way to grab a lot of blocks quickly. Basically, rather than take this seriously, we're gonna take the free blocks and just nerd pull up through the ceiling, which is conveniently made out of the most delicate block and skip both rooms four and five entirely in about six seconds. And honestly, the space just keeps giving us items to make our job easier. The noise room gives you free minecarts so we can skip the parkour room and they added a nice little window so we don't have to go through the piston maze room. Hey, hey guys, I'm starting to think this tower was designed to bait people into commenting about how I'm going to debunk. Now, when you get to the room with the button, don't press a button, don't press it. The choice here is very easy, I don't even have to say it. Obviously, we press the button. That's because after pressing it, if you disconnect and rejoin, the button actually gives you free blocks for building up with. Then you'll take the blocks and build all the way up to the roof, which as I mentioned, is open, and then just jump into the vault. So now that we've planned our entire speed run and we've reluctantly left all our escape kits at home, it's time to do this for real and break into the base as fast as possible. Ready? Three, two, one. All right, come on, you know I had to do it at least once, but look, even if this ender chest wasn't here and your inventory was empty, it's actually still faster to get blocks to nerd pull over the tower rather than go inside it. And you wanna know why? It's because Wenzo so generously built the very first layer out of iron blocks, and all it takes is six iron blocks to craft enough bars to build all the way into the vault room in three minutes, which includes the time it took to get the wood and stone. And I know what you're saying, Ken, you got wood and stone tools? That's not fair. Those materials are way too overpowered. Heck, you shouldn't be allowed to collect anything from outside. Why don't we just replace the whole world with obsidian, put up some obsidian walls, and while we're at it, make the entire sky out of bedrock so you can't build up anymore. Try something clever now. Oh no, sure it would be a shame if the first layer wasn't built entirely out of collectible blocks. Oh wait guys, this is way more fun and convenient. See, now I don't even have to press the fun button that gives you free blocks. Eh, how about I do anyway? Sure sounds like something's going on downstairs. Wonder what that's about. All right, Ken, we all know this isn't impressive. Stop cheating by picking up items. In fact, let's say if a single item enters your inventory this entire run, you'll be banned and you're at half a heart and you're not allowed to heal. Oh, you sweet summer child. Walk in the drip leaf, disconnect to avoid the crystal damage, admire the other decorations in this room, frolic in the cactus patch, destroy these fires, travel through the cobwebs, then break the first of the three cobwebs in order to get to this middle area, continue destroying fires, travel through the cobwebs again, mine the second cobweb to put out all the fires up to the staircase, mine the final cobweb and run up the stairs. Open the trap doors into the blaze room, use them to parkour onto the actual maze and start running across the maze because these guys simply cannot aim, ignore this room. Employ a tactic of breaking the wither roses from a distance so you don't pick them up, then only mine the blocks that they land on and use the remaining blocks in order to parkour to the real part 
parkour. This was actually the only difficult part. Then do the parkour to get onto the next layer. Mine six glass to skip the piston room, ignore the next three rooms, except for the frog room, you are gonna have to kill the ones that are waiting to get themselves shot. Not because you might get hurt, but because you'll accidentally pick up an arrow on the way otherwise. Then admire the decorations, and finally, to get past the room full of puffer fish, go around it, staircasing through the blocks on the other side of the glass. When you reach the shroom lights, mine them carefully and painfully wait five minutes for them to despawn, keep going until you reach the glass above the fish tank, be careful around the one corner where they could hit you, and finally, finish the staircase through the glass until you get to the vault room. Fine. Screw it! This time, all the walls are made of bedrock. Everything's bedrock. The deadly things will be tripled. You can't disconnect glitch anymore. You'll still be at half a heart, but this time you'll be in adventure mode. And since you wouldn't even be able to collect the valuables if you got up there, you can at least have a pickaxe that only has the ability to mine ore blocks. Think you're clever now? Truly, this is the hardest challenge humanity has ever faced. This tower is filled with so many impossible obstacles. Surely the tower is doing everything it can to stop me from mining that beautiful, massive pile of valuable blocks that has been sitting right next to it this entire time.